Welcome to Business Over Beer, where entrepreneurs, small business owners, and people passionate about what they do bring us their stories and their favorite beer. Hosted by Ben Surratt, Jonathan Kaler, and Jason Canope, it's time to get down to business and drink some beer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second biggest podcast in the Pacific Northwest. Yes, we are still behind those pesky Sasquatch hunters, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling, ladies and gentlemen, that this episode will bring us to the apex and we will reign supreme in the Pacific Northwest podcast universe. Yes, this is, of course, Business Over Beer. I am your co-host, Ben Surratt, and alongside me is the man of the hour, the terror of power. Some people call him the space cowboy. Some people call him six-pack Willie. Some people call him Touchdown Jesus. But we know him as Spartacus, Mr. Jonathan Kaler. Happy Friday. Ah, happy Friday to you, Ben. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I am Spartacus. I have led you here, my friend. We are still in the time of COVID. We are still quarantining. We're still doing the Zoom podcasting but you know what when you have a guest as awesome as we have tonight it almost makes it okay to be doing it over zoom agreed and speaking of okay with us as always is the gift that keeps on giving. He is the gangster of Hazeldale. Are you down with the K-N-O-P-P? Yeah, you know me. Jason Canope, welcome to Business Over Beer, my friend. How are you feeling tonight, my man? I'm feeling okay. Good. <laughs> uh, I'm okay with being here on a Friday night with all of you, especially our guest. I think I'm more excited about that now. than. But uh, so tonight, I would like to introduce everybody Carmen San Diego, Miss Ray Rayland Logan of Gray Digital Marketing. How are you doing tonight? Oh, you know, being mysterious and hoping somebody can find me around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, thank you so much. Ray, welcome to the program. How are you? Thank you guys so much. That was a beautiful introduction. Um, I'm 100% here to take out Sasquatch. I don't know who they are, yes. but I'm the most competitive human on planet Earth, and you're going down. You're welcome. <laughs> well, what, really, what really scares me, Ben, is uh, she's turning into our competition oh, pretty soon. So yeah. I'm a little nervous about even having her on, because she might be shooting for us and the Sasquatch Hunters both. Sasquatch yeah. can be number three. Deal. For sure. For Deal. Sure. Right they're already that. they're already number three in everybody's hearts. So correct, even if they're number one in your program. Sasquatch, though, it's not I, even real. I don't know what that means. What? It's not real. <laughs> don't tell them that. Don't, don't tell, don't tell them. them. Oh that. my gosh! <laughs> That's why they should be number two. It's not real. Agreed. <laughs> Came to fight tonight, didn't she? She That's did. Good. good thing this is a drinking show, but. We always start with your business, right? So you own Gray's I, Digital Gray Marketing. marketing. Mm -hmm. Give us the 50,000 foot view of your business and kind of what you're into. Yeah, so Gray Digital Marketing, what I do is I help business owners take the time suck out of social media and turn it into a scroll stopping money maker. I, I really am passionate about teaching folks on how they can use social media to sell and to grow their business as an entry point to their funnel. Social media is not going to be the say-all be-all, but it is the place that can connect you 24-7. 
and that has power because you cannot be awake 24 seven, no matter how hard most of us business owners try. I'm being one of them. Sure. So that is um, truly, honestly, the main portion of my business. I am working on a course for those who cannot afford our agency services, but like to get started on their own. That's launching on Black Friday. And I am also starting a podcast called Our Diverse Pineapple Tribe that goes and chats about diverse voices to uh, get more clarity around why our marketing personas fail because they are not inclusive of other communities. First season will be on Black Voices since, you know, that has been a major topic of this year. I am part Black and I could not answer the question of how do you market to Black people because I am one person of 17% of the population. Awesome. So that is the overview. Wow. Well, there is a lot, a lot to uncover there. I can't wait to dig into all of that, but this is the Business Over Beer podcast. This is the beer portion of the program. We ask all of our guests to bring a beer to share. Rayland, have you brought a beer for us to share? I have brought Portland Ciders Company Pineapple Rosé. It is the absolute mm, delicious beer that is also on brand for my hashtag Pineapple Tribe. It is Perfect. from Clackamas, Oregon. You may pop it open now. I will join you in drinking a small one, though. Perfect for the Pineapple Tribe for sure. And in this time of COVID, where we just had new restrictions come in, it's really cool to drink local. So I'm glad that you grabbed something local down in Clackamas. That's awesome. Anytime. I support my people. Oh, was I supposed to bring a fancy cup? I got No, a no, it's okay. It's you okay. be you. You better be you. You sure this is cider and not wine? I am darn serious. It's cider. It's says, okay. I mean, it should be. Let's find out. It's, it's made with the apples. Prost. Prost. Dink. Well, now I'm now I'm curious. Did I lie to you? <laughs> no, it's cider. No, it's cider. Oh, okay. Well, it's tropical cider, and it makes me happy. Rosé all day. It really tastes like cider. It doesn't taste like wine. Not taste like wine. It is not a rosé. It has, it has some rosé-ness to it. It's is almost that, like a sparkling rosé. Kind of, yeah. Is that from the blueberries, you think? Because it says that. It too? Yeah. Yeah, splash of Northwest grown blueberries. I bet that's from the blueberries. Canope, what do you think of it? I think it tastes a little like pineapple, and it's a cider. And uh, it's not bad. I like the pineapple in the back because you get, I mean, yeah. is there is there actual apple? I mean, is there apple too? Well, is I, there apple cider it, in it or is it just pineapple? One of these has to say something. See, I don't know for sure. I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I don't know a ton about ciders in the, in the production process, but I really like the way it starts. It's got a nice tartness up front and then that pineapple sweetness kind of finishes in the back and it's, Super effervescent, which I really like. So th there's a lot to like about this, for sure. I mean, it does say 100% Northwest Apple, so I feel like you can't put that on a can unless you're a liar. And I, I believe in them. Yeah. Portland See, Cider apples, Company, please correct definitely us. Definitely getting the apples up front, and then the pineapple kind of kind of finishes up the back. That sounds like a mullet. <laughs> Not a man bun. Not a man no. bun. But a mullet. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy my mullet, you guys. <laughs> Friday night? No, what do you think of it, dude? What do you think of it? Did he... he already told you. Did he? I, I thought it was all right. I like it. It tastes pretty good. I mean, I couldn't down a lot of this, but it, it's not bad. It's refreshing. To be honest, I'm not a cider person, but I... I don't dislike this. This is refreshing. It really is. It's so, refreshing. Ray, did you, so, Ray, did you buy this just because it's pineapple, or is this like a staple of your of your drinking? Is this like something you've had a, a lot before? Um, it's actually something I've had a lot before. The first time I had it was Fourth of July this year. Um, 
you know, there's always a story behind that. There's a picture on my personal Instagram of me drinking this. Um, I kind of went off about uh, everybody's like, I'm not celebrating 4th of July because of Black Lives Matter. And I was like, oh, Lordy, here we go. Well, guess who's celebrating 4th of July with pineapple rosé and she's black. Kick your feet up. <laughs> who said that? Oh, so many people, Ben. So many people. It was ridiculous that I just went on a rampage and called everybody out while smiling and drinking this in my red tank top for 4th of July. America. <laughs> America. Yeah. <laughs> so um, my first question to you, Ray, is this. You've been in business for how long? Your business has been, is how old? Seven months. Almost to the day. To the day. Legally. <laughs> I got I just got to ask it. <laughs> what made you decide to start a business during a pandemic? And yeah, just I'll end with that. You guys are going to pack and learn a lot about me in this amount of time. And that's cool. I mean, I'm an open book, but I, hmm, so I have a little one and his name is Gray. Hence Gray Digital Marketing. It's not because, you know, there's a middle area. It's because... His name is Grayson. So a week before my 30th birthday, which was April 3rd. So if you do the math, my birthday's the 10th. I got laid off because of COVID, even though two days prior, they told us that they weren't going to lay any of us off. Now I was already doing things to have um, supplemental income and that's cool. It was like, I did it because I enjoyed running people's advertising but then I was like, well, I don't have a job. I am a single mom. I can't get a hold of unemployment. Um, I'm almost 30. So that's just depressing in and of itself. It's like, congratulations, you're starting 30 off as a failure. And I wasn't going to settle for it. So I was like, you know what? I will take the last of what I have and I'm going to start great digital marketing. I'm going to make it official. And I have a tendency to do a ton of things. I mean, a ton. Like we cannot go through the laundry list that is Raylan Logan. And one of the things I know is that I tend to do many things for other people. And I always hold true by that. So if I named it after Grayson, I wasn't going to give up ever because that's my baby. So that's why I started in the pandemic. Plus they say you win during tough times if you start things. It's fact. It's fact. For sure. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that yesterday. We talked about mm -hmm. those who those who are doing things now and preparing themselves for the long term and innovating, and they will be much better off when things return to whatever normal looks like after this thing, for sure. Exactly. So I just wanted to win. I like first place. So are you are you from Portland? What's your what is your background? Um, well, no, <laughs> that's, that's the simple answer. The full answer is I'm just going to claim West coast, best coast. And I am the oldest of six kids and not a single one of us is born in the same state. Hmm. Yes. Whoa. That's interesting. Yeah. Big facts. I was born in Oklahoma. That's Oklahoma, first. where the wind yeah, comes sweeping down the plain. <laughs> uh, my sister's named after my sister's name Mariah after the wind. You know, for your Oklahoma moment. Yeah. Are you serious? Dead serious. That's why she's named Mariah because that's one of my mom's favorite musicals is Oklahoma. Weren't you in Oklahoma in high school, Ben? No, they no. The year before they did that. Before I moved to, I, I'm from Wisconsin originally. Oh, nice. Kayla is from Ohio, and Canope is the gangster of Hazeldale. So, right. <laughs> so gangsta out in Hazeldale. <laughs> well, you know, you were referred to us. You were introduced to us from. Uh, speaking of Mariah's, I was going to say, yeah, uh, yes, were... it's very hard to be friends with Mariah because I'm like, oh, is that the wrong name? Like, I keep thinking I'm talking to my sister. Because Mariah and Michelle Martinez, who are good friends of the show, they are part of the gang of Hazeldell. That's right. So, so you care? Be careful what you say about Hazeldell. They may, they may come after you. They're gonna roll up. They yeah. might. <laughs> they might. The three of us are gonna roll up with uh, with some cerveza and uh, some tacos. If you 
you know, if you listen to our episode that we had. Yeah. Well, Mariah and I are both on um, the American Marketing Association. She's my director of luncheons and I am the VP of programming. So me and her chat on a regular basis. So I doubt my, uh, my sister from AMA is going to roll up on me. Sorry. She's, she's going to pick me over you, Canope. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> and expected. <laughs> much. I'm going to Encourage. text her and tell her. <laughs> I just got to ask, what is, uh, what's this hobby of uh, coffee cups? Hobby of coffee cups? Oh my gosh, I love them so much. Um, and my boyfriend really does supply me with more. So this one, for example, is the most recent one. I think it's very pretty. You can't tell that it's like shiny on the bottom and matte on the top. But um, we are walking and I will stare at them in the grocery store until eventually he says, would you like that? And then I get it. Um, I think I own over a hundred coffee cups. There's no reason for it other than they're pretty. But didn't you tell us before the podcast that you don't even drink coffee? Yes, I did. I drink lots of tea, though. And they make really good, like, goldfish containers. So, like, you can put your goldfish in there and eat them out of coffee cups. There's easy to hold because there's a handle. <laughs> yep, I've seen that before. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I just got overly defensive of my mugs like you were going yeah. to, like, hurt their feelings. <laughs> That's a lot of goldfish. <laughs> okay, so Grayson eats a lot of goldfish, and I buy those giant um, carton containers. And he now knows how to find them, so he will just pour his own goldfish. The amount of goldfish I have to clean off a kitchen floor is epic. No, I feel uh, you on that I one. I can certainly relate to that. Yeah. yeah. Feel Power tip for all four-year-olds. So how did you get started into marketing? So what's your, what's your professional background? So yeah. how did you land in, in the digital marketing space? So I went to college for psychology. That's a fun fact for everybody. And then me and Daddy Dearest got into it. So my idea of rebellion was to go to fashion school and go to school for fashion marketing. So I went to school for fashion marketing for about two and a half years, realized I really, really did love psychology. So I went back to ASU online and I finished up in psych with a minor in marketing. I worked retail for a very long time within the merchandising sphere. And I helped when I worked at Nordstrom, um, even though I ran my own department, I was in charge of doing a lot of marketing, a lot of event planning, and then helping online with how um, things were merchandised online, like what pants should be towards the top versus which ones um, sell better on, on the floor. And so many things of that nature. I've always loved social media and let's, I'm going to date myself. When I was in high school, MySpace was a thing. And then Facebook came out like towards my senior year. So it's always been with me and I've always loved advertising, good, bad, and the ugly. And so I, I would play with that and I would help people with theirs because the reality is like, you cannot major in social media. Like it's cute that like schools think they can supply that, but it changes every single day. And so um, there's no textbook that can keep up with the speed of that. So I just enjoy being an early adopter, much to my joke about hopping on the podcast train, um, being a part of TikTok early. I think that those things are important, but that is how I got into marketing and that is how we found ourselves here. Awesome. So a lot of people um, don't know marketing, obviously, as well as you do. So they're, they hear marketing and I think a lot of people just assume that social media and marketing are the same thing. Um, but you just, you just talked about merchandising as a way of marketing as well. Maybe you could uh, share with our audience, maybe make a, 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 a differentiation between digital marketing and the purpose of digital marketing and why people do that versus more traditional marketing and, and, and some of the, the things around traditional marketing that, um, that are contained within that. So when we think of traditional marketing, or just to explain it, I mean, one thing that we should really, really explain is that marketing is 
is an umbrella term. And there are many, I mean, so many things that I cannot discuss in this one podcast, or it's going to sound like an encyclopedia. Uh, but when we look at the vein of traditional marketing, we are talking about print. So things that goes in newspapers, magazines, things of that nature, commercials that are on traditional TV. Um, a lot of uh, billboards are considered traditional marketing. But the thing with those is there are no analytics to back it up. You can say there were so many views, but you don't know what the demographics were of that household that that commercial showed in. You have no idea who decided to buy that magazine off the shelf. You can get a general scope of who your reader is. You can get a general scope of who your audience is by what TV channels they tune into. But you seriously do not know who they are or if they chose to buy because of that. Mm. There's no click return to it. Um, whereas in digital marketing, whether that is through social media or that is through Google, Bing, what have you, you have the ability to track people. Like whenever you accept cookies, that person or that entity is using data to collect off of you. They collect the data of the sites that you typically visit. It pulls up things off of your social media, like your age and the places that you frequent. And that sounds scary. And yes, Siri is listening to you. She's listening to me right now. But that allows as a marketer for you to gain more analytics and more data on your consumers so you can best tailor those ads and remarket to people. So if I put out an ad today and it goes out to a cold audience because I believe that my base audience listens to biz over beers and that's what I use to target them, then what it's going to do is if you interact with that ad, you go visit the page, you don't do anything. I can remarket to you. So I can be like, oh, hey, you remember that product you saw from Biz Over Beers? Why didn't you buy it? I'm sitting right here for you. And it follows you around the internet. And that is why traditional marketing doesn't have the ability to follow you around like a stray dog. Digital marketing does. Hmm. What's the danger in that? Is there, a, I mean, what's the danger in that? You Do you see a danger in it? I mean, I'm sure there's a danger to that. We can go down the rabbit hole of Russia hacking our elections, um, but I mean, not even not even that, but like, like just your information out there, hacking and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, some people are going to have ill intentions. I think that's why you have so many companies that are like, this is why we're secure. You cannot have a pixel or which is used to remarket. You cannot have that on your site without having a privacy policy and you are responsible for people's information and you have to dictate how long you hold on to information. There is a danger in it, but there's a risk with it, with everything. Like you can't walk outside your front door without there being a risk of danger. So, I mean, it's about as dangerous as walking outside, I guess. That's a valid point. Well, it's a balance, right? I mean, it's people talk about security and the importance of security, but they're also talking about convenience and personalization and, you know, this is what I want. And so I think consumers talk out of both sides of their mouth. And I was listening to something recently, and I, I wish I could remember what it was, but it was time and time again, people say they care about security, but they don't act that way. Yeah, their actions definitely do not speak the same as their words. It's like they're two different languages, to be quite frank. Yeah. That's as a marketer, uh, what are your thoughts on some of the newer technology, like uh, within the new version of uh, the iPhone operating system that will give the, the user the ability to say, nope, I don't want anything tracking me. Is there, I, a, go ahead. I think that's wise, but you know, I also come from a family of prosecutors. I come from a family of military people. And if you don't want to be tracked, I don't blame you. And that's okay. That's your choice. I'm never going to fault anybody for that. I think that even though that data is excellent, I, I'm never going to say that you should not use traditional means, which is insight and analysis and physically ask people what they think. So if you don't want to be tracked, by all means, don't be tracked. Love it. So there's ways for you as a marketer to, to look and find how to gain that insight into people versus being tracked on their phone or their device or whatever. 
Correct. And I think that it's still the best way. Like data can only tell you so much, but data is not going to have the passion or the reason why or anything of that nature. It's always going to be assumption and your ability to interpret the data. But you know what they say about assuming. So, Mm -hmm. Well, you're in a unique position because you're now a small business owner. You're launching your business. So you are not only teaching this, and selling this for your clients, you also need to do this for yourself. Um, you know, you need to be a marketer for your business as well as selling to your clients. Hey, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to help you do. So, you know, what advice would you give to a brand new small business owner as far as, you know, where would they start with their marketing? Like how should, how should I, as a small business owner, where, where, where should I start and what should I prioritize uh, as far as my marketing goes? I would almost say you shouldn't prioritize your marketing in the sense of paying for advertising. I would say you should prioritize it in your sales. I think that you need to prove that there is something worth selling and you need to go out there, like hit the pavement. I mean, you can't really hit the pavement during COVID, but you can call people, you can you need to turn on your inner door-to-door salesman, woman, person, because you don't have a business without money and you don't have money without sales and sales and marketing do go hand in hand, but how in the world do you expect to pay for advertising if you can't even sell the product itself first? So you need to go out and test it. I'm not going to be the person, I mean, build community on social media. I'm a I am a strong proponent of that. Make sure you're running advertising, but first have proof of concept. And without proof of concept, there's really no point. Your first clients, customers will be your toughest ones, but they will be the ones most worth it because you're going to learn more. And once you learn, then you have the ability to really fine tune your messaging to put into advertising. But I will never suggest that somebody just throw money out into the ether blindly. I think that's irresponsible. Do you find that um, in your experience, either either now in, in your business and dealing with your clients or, or in any past roles, do you find that small business owners struggle with that sales aspect, um, you know, being a, this, the main salesperson and to kind of combine with that, do they believe or do they think that maybe social media is or digital marketing can can be that salesperson on their behalf? Or it's some sort of like magic that that will help them so they don't actually have to go out and do the selling themselves. I think many your people, experience. Yeah, I think many people um, see sales as a dirty word. They're like, I don't want to sell anything. And it's like, okay, so why'd you go into business? Like you have to sell something and it's not the thing with the thing with social media advertising with digital advertising is it is only as good as the information that you can provide because you are inputting information and saying, this is the person I want you to go after. If you don't act, if you've never actually interacted with those people and you don't truly know that that's who your customer is then again, you're just throwing money away. Like you're just paying Facebook, you're just paying Google. And so I, you know, I know it's tough and it's hard and it's icky, but you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that goes into selling. And it it doesn't have to feel like selling. You have a solution to somebody's problem. You're passionate about whatever that solution is, or you wouldn't have gone into business. And that is why it's so important for you to go out there and put your passion and your heart on the line. And if you cannot do that, then I'm sorry, I'm going to be tough love here and say, maybe you should sell your business. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Mm. What role does marketing play in the awareness building side of, of marketing? Because a lot of marketing isn't, isn't direct selling, right? A lot of it can be about building awareness and trying to identify who, who those target customers might be or who those target clients might be. Um, So what, what role does that play early on for a small business owner? I think, well, I always talk about it in the term of 
the different spheres that you live in. And primarily when you're starting out, you live in a sphere of visibility. And so marketing is all about getting brand awareness out there. Like you have to go out and share your brand. And it's about building that community. And it's about letting people know that they have a problem. So you have to make people problem aware in that sphere of visibility. Eventually you have enough traction that you can go to a sphere of engagement. You always have to kind of have one toe in visibility, but you go into a sphere of engagement. And so that sphere is very important because you want those folks to engage with you because you need to make sure that you're getting feedback, constant feedback. You cannot be afraid if somebody gives you a poor review, you need to learn from it. Sorry about it. Not everybody's going to like you. And you need that ability to have that back and forth dialogue with your community if you want to continue to grow. And so that is a part of marketing that um, is shaped that is very different from sales because you are, you're, you're putting yourself out there to a bunch of strangers you may never ever meet, but they'll know who you are and you want to really be at the forefront of people's minds. So people talk about you when you're not in the room in a good way. Man. So you're, you, you are, you're very unique because you are saying like pound the pavement. I mean, nobody says that anymore. That's very old school and you're, you're young. So where did that come from? Where, where did that sales come from? Is that just, you're naturally born with it or where did that, that old school kind of salesman, saleswomanship I have, uh, prior to owning Create Digital Marketing, I did sales and leadership. So I've managed many, many a team, large teams, small teams, all teams. And in those roles, a lot of times I, I let it all. So like I was responsible for every number, anything that came through. I had to own. And so you can, I learned very quickly, you can only buy things if you have money to buy things and money comes from selling. And so, um, I also discovered that the best way you can sell is by getting to know people and building those relationships. I, you know, one day I'm just, I'm going to take it back to a different story. There one day I was on LinkedIn and I, I mean, I have opinions, so <laughs> poor world. I feel really bad for them, but I had posted because I, um, during my day job, I also sell. And so when looking at that, it was like, I got really frustrated because when I'm on LinkedIn, I get message after message after message of somebody telling me that they have the solution to the problem that I have. And I'm like, that's cool. You don't know what my problems are. And right now my biggest problem is my child yelling at me because he's hungry and I'm in a meeting. So if you have a solution to that, by all means, come take my kid and play with him. But I just, all these things like you need this app and you need this like pro, like, no. And so I got really pissed one day and I was like, you know what? Sliding into somebody's DMs with a solution and selling them something right off the bat is the equivalent to going on a blind date and kissing the person right as you meet them. You wouldn't do it. It's weird. And you need to knock it off. And so a lot of people really love that one. And some people like got pissed at me and I was like, you can be pissed. I don't care. And they're like, well, doesn't it mean that people get to like the same conclusion? I was like, I mean, if you enjoy throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it sticks, but I enjoy having long lasting relationships where people come back. And, um, I think that's really what it's rooted in is my deep love for having relationships with people and knowing them long-term and there, I mean, there's some truth to pounding the pavement. Did, Not you have everything. A, did you have a mentor or anything like that though? I mean, did you have anybody who like you looked up to? That yes. Her name's Angie. She lives in Arizona now. She was actually my store manager at Nordstrom a long, long time ago. I mean, like I was 20 going on 21 and um, nobody really believed in me for some weird reason. Like I just kept going through the... Uh, metaphorical rotating door of managers. And so every single time I get a new one, it was like, start from ground zero. And she really realized I was smart enough to handle my own department. She gave me my own department one day, my regional didn't have faith in me. And then she called my regional out for it. And she's like, Raylan's pretty smart. So have you asked her why she doesn't know this? And um, the minute she told me how to use reporting back to the relationships that I built on the floor, I became an unstoppable force of nature. Boom. Love it. Love it. 
Well, I am really excited to find out more about the course that you're developing, because I think that's going to tie into all of this conversation that we just had. And of course, I want to find out about your podcast and get into some other, maybe more heavy topics. But Ben, you look thirsty, bro. I am thirsty. Do it. Join us next week for part two of this episode. You can be sure we'll be talking more business and drinking more beer. Business Over Beer reminds you to always drink responsibly. Our theme song is Idiocracy by Christian Leo. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Business Over Beer, a TH3 Entertainment production.